lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy. This time I'm reviewing The Bride Test by Helen Huang. This is a contemporary romance that follows two Vietnamese characters. One is Esmeralda, or Esme, and who is from Vietnam, and the other one is Kai, who is I think a second generation um, American, but his parents are Viet Vietnamese. Um, so he's grown up in that culture also, but also he's, like, Americanized. Kai is also autistic, which makes forming relationships, especially romantic ones, difficult. And Kai is convinced that he can't actually love anyone. His mother decides that Kai actually really does need somebody, he just hasn't realized it yet. So she goes to Vietnam to try to find him a wife. And she finds Esme. Esme's, uh, Vietnamese name is, like, my or me or may it's m y with this accent over it i don't know how to pronounce it she takes the americanized name of esmeralda from the hunchback of notre dame the disney movie and then shorten it's shortens it to esme anyway basically this is a story of an immigrant really dealing with not feeling like she fits in and trying to become americanized when she first comes over she doesn't know like any english at all all she knows is from movies and it's very broken um, so she mostly talks in Vietnamese, but Kai, despite having grown up in a Vietnamese family, doesn't know it that well, so there's, um, there's a lot of miscommunications happening in this book, not only about their backgrounds and where they're coming from. Esme being from Vietnam and having a completely different cultural experience, um, versus Kai being in America, but also Kai having autism, um, and how he functions but also like he's very regimented in his life like he does the same thing every day and he's fine with it um so he doesn't really see the need to have another person there with him all the time um but then as he starts getting used to esme she becomes part of his routine and the book is also told in third person omniscient so i like the consistency of like having an area who knows everything but also getting to know what is actually happening and going through esme's mind and actually what is going through kai's mind particularly so esme is the main breadwinner for her family she is a cleaner she isn't making a ton of money but it's enough to support herself her mother her grandmother and also esme has a daughter so all four of them are living in this really small apartment um all, i think they're all sleeping in one room it's really they're not doing they're not well off but they're like meeting their basic needs but like there's no expectation that they're ever going to be able to get out of that so when Esme is offered this chance to go to America and marry Kai um she's a little conflicted about it she doesn't know anything about him really um she, she has a the mother brings the pictures she's like well he's not bad looking um and they set up this trial period where Esme has about three months to meet Kai and convince Kai to marry her and if she doesn't Esme's just going to go back to Vietnam and it'll be like, hey, you've got this free trip to America. Um, but Esme really wants the opportunities that are afforded here, the chances to do better. And also, like, she loves school and she wants to study and she wants to learn everything and she's curious. But because she had her daughter when she was so young, she couldn't finish school. Esme is all about what America can offer her and if she has to marry Kai to do it, okay. So we find out pretty early on, I think it's in the first chapter, so I don't think it's a spoiler as to why Kai doesn't think he can love anyone. When he was 16, his best friend and cousin dies. And at the funeral, Kai can't even bring himself to, to cry. Like, he doesn't see a reason to. Like, he's sad, um, but he's not heartbroken the way that everybody else around him appears to be. And so Kai writes off the ability to actually love anyone. Like, he has fond regards for his family um, and enjoys spending time with them, but he doesn't really think that he loves them. Um, and he definitely doesn't see the point of trying to form other relationships, trying to form other friendships outside of family, or trying to go find a girl. So he has no experience dating. And his mom uh, kind of tricks him and is like, hey, this girl's coming. She's going to live with you starting tomorrow. Um, she's going to be your wife, uh, so get used to it. And Kai's like, what? So his entire routine is thrown out the window by having Esme just in his house, which is the two of them. And she is trying to seduce him and trying to convince him to marry her. 
And Kai is trying to just be polite because otherwise his mom is going to get mad. He's been given this out that she'll go back in three months if he doesn't want to marry her. But he has to try. He has to take her on dates. He has to take her to these family weddings that are happening. Like, his mom is going to be there. She will know if he doesn't hold, hold his bargain. And if he doesn't go through this earnestly and try with Esme, then she's just going to do it again until he does actually try and find somebody. So... It's so interesting and so fun to watch these two. Um, they definitely do develop actual feelings for them. It is a romance, so by the end they are actually like each other. Um, but things are complicated by the whole family thing and the whole uh, Esme needing a green card or she's going to stay in the States. Like, they can't just keep dating. Um, she needs... She can't, like, Esme can't just stay here indefinitely without Kai marrying her or some other way of her getting a green card. I love seeing Esme's journey as an immigrant. Um, what she thinks of America, how outside of the U.S. we are viewed, um, what she values, what her life is like in Vietnam, and the, the struggle to get here and, like, assimilate. And not only to try to, like, win over Kai, but also just trying to fit in in America and have a life outside of the house. Um, she ends up going to night school at one point, and, like, trying to... She ends up working at the mom's diner, um, being a waitress. She uh, makes friends here, and just seeing her journey, her trying to learn English and trying to adjust is really, really fascinating, and I really love that. I also really love getting inside Kai's head and how he functions, but also how he rationalizes things, because he does he does notice what's going on, even if he doesn't always rationalize it and view it the same way as everybody else. Um, so I loved seeing Kai's worldview. Um, I also like how incredibly successful he is at his job. Like, he found something that he is good at that fits right in with his autism, that, like, that becomes, that being autistic is actually kind of an asset to the job that he has. Um, which is some accounting thing. So, like, being very structured and very regimented and not, and, like, enjoying doing the same thing repetitively, that is, like, perfect for Kai. And so it's actually, for that purpose, it's great. Um, so I like seeing him thrive, just despite of or because of the autism. So that's amazing. We also just get to see how that functions and plays out in an adult, like, adult functioning in society and having relationships and like going about his everyday life um having his own house and what things like go into sensory overload for him what things set him off um and then how he also has learned how to cope with that stuff which i like yay for that there's so much diversity and representation in here oh yeah there is also there is sex in this book um there are definitely some sex scenes it's a little bit explicit but not too bad um, so if you're looking for that, it's in here. And if you're like me and you don't like it when it's a huge part of the book, it's not such a huge part that it, like, ruined from the rest of the story. I also like the way that Kai has to work his way through having sex because he's not used to physical contact. He's not used to intimacy. This is his first real relationship. Um, and also having all his friends give him advice, like, actually good advice about um, how to please a woman and, like, the orgasm, like, of how to please a woman and that it's important that Esme is enjoying sex also. Um, so, but, like, both of them need to enjoy what's going on and it's not just Kai trying to please Esme because she wants it or Esme trying to please Kai just because she needs to marry him. Um, but, like, it's a, a thing that works for both of them and that's, like, an emphasis in this book, which I love. There's my review for The Bride Test by Helen Wong. Let me know in the comments below if you've read this and what you thought of it. Are there any other similar books that I would also enjoy and that you enjoyed? I will also link the review I did for The Kiss Quotient, which also has an autistic main character in Stella. Um, and also is a great, adorable romance. It was amazing reading one of my favorites of last year. So, peace out. I love you guys, and keep reading. Bye!